Now, the next thing I want to go through is creating a Ledger hardware-based account. So you've seen what it looks like to do create a general software account and hold that on your phone. But there may be a reason why, particularly until we have multi-factor, it may be that you want to have the security of using a hardware ledger device to create that account. So we enable that for now. And then later on, once we have multi-factor, the ledger device becomes just one of the many factors you can apply. But let's show you what it looks like to set up a ledger account right now on the initial v1.0 version. So back over here, same process of saying create a new account over on the phone on the right. And let me call this uh, my super secure account. And I turn on this switch for create with Ledger hardware wallet. When I do that, it's got a little bit of a different process. So now it goes, okay, now I need to know which hardware device you want to use to create that account. Currently, I haven't set up any Ledger devices in my phone at all. So it's saying, well, I need to add a Ledger device before I can create an account with one. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll hit Add Ledger Device. And it gives me a little of instructions where I need to connect it to my PC um, and have everything running. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, one thing to note here before I continue is that there is a new Ledger app that you need to download for the Babylon network. So if you go to Ledger Live, um, you're going to need to look for the Radix Babylon app. Uh, this is different than the original Radix app that we had for the Olympia network. That version of the app will not work anymore on the Babylon network. You have to use the new version. To begin with, that app is going to be in developer mode, just like the Olympia one was, which means you have to go in your Ledger Live settings, go into experimental and turn on developer mode. Um, that means that this hasn't been audited yet fully by Ledger. Um, you use it at your own risk, all the normal caveats of this, but this is the only way we can get it in right in, in the beginning. We wanted to make sure that we had support for Ledger users right on day one of Babylon without having to go to side loading. So developer mode allows us to do that for right now. Um, and we're, of course, going to be seeking getting the audit done so that we can move to a, a full proper listing in Ledger Live for the Babylon app. So I've already done that. I've got the Babylon app on, the, on my, uh, my Ledger device. I already have that app in, uh, launched and running. So now I will tap continue on my phone. And you can see it's now popped up a browser tab. So what happened here is that my phone is talking through the connector extension and saying, hey, I'm going to need to do an interaction with the Ledger device. And we do that via USB with my PC. We don't directly connect the Ledger device to the phone. The reason we did it that way is because basically the most important thing about Ledger support for us was making sure that we supported the greatest number of devices and made sure that Ledger users on Olympia had a path forward on Babylon. So there are a number of devices that cannot connect to a, directly to a mobile phone. They only connect via USB to a PC. We had to support those. And so we just made that the least common denominator. We were focused on just doing the USB connection. Um, in the future, some of, some of this may change. With, with multi-factor, a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, the options um, change on this stuff. But for now, this is the support that we've got. Um, but you can see that we can, you can connect a Ledger S, S Plus, or Nano X hardware wallet device. So I will click Continue over here. And it just made a connection to my Ledger device since I already had it connected and I already had the app logged in or already connected and my pin entered. It went ahead and made that request to the device and says, cool, I know now know which device this is and I can create an account with it. Um, if there was a problem, it would have prompted me and said, hey, it looks like you don't have the Ledger app open or it might need permissions for USB connection, but all that stuff I've done already. So once you do this, you move on to naming this device. So let me just call this uh, my Black Nano so I can remember it. You can have multiple hardware ledger devices if you want. So if you want to create another device, you can choose another one. You can give it another name, and it'll prompt you with that name whenever you need to sign. So I'll go ahead. Now this is added to my list of devices that I can choose from, and I can now finish the account creation process. So I hit Continue. It's now deriving the, that account using the device. That was now a connect, that was actually another connection to the device. It just did automatically over my Radix connection link, and the account has been created. So now if I go back to my account list, I can see I have those first two software accounts that I created before. And now I have a third account that you can see has that little tag on it that says Ledger, so I can remember that that's a, a hardware-enabled device.
Um, now, whenever I need to sign any transactions that include that particular account, the wallet will know, ah, okay, I need to ask for my Black Nano because that's the device associated with this account. It'll prompt me to connect that, it'll get the signatures it needs, and then do the transaction. So it's quite straightforward. Um, another thing to keep in track, to, to be aware of, is that even though right now it's kind of like we've got software accounts and we've got ledger accounts, more or less like a traditional crypto wallet, in the future, when we add multi-factor support in the UI in the wallet, that's going to change. Now, none of those accounts are really special. We can migrate all of those accounts to multi-factor control, and there's no such difference between a software account and a hardware account. You'll still keep that same account address, but now you can just choose, do you want to use a ledger device to sign? Do you want it as your recovery factor? Do you want a combination of things? All those options will be able to be applied to that account, and they all will work however you want. So quite straightforward. So that's ledger account usage.